The world of Dragon Ball and One Punch Man collide and unite once again in a whole new series of adventures that scratch all of those crossover related itches we've all been asking for. But it's not just Saitama we're focusing on now. From sparring with Vegeta to exhibiting his strength against Boo in the World Martial Arts Tournament to fending off the Frieza Force with Piccolo, he had his fair field of adventures, so the spotlight's on his other friend, as well this time. In Dragon Ball X One Punch Man. So sit tight and let's see what these guys are getting up to. Our story starts with Geno seeking repairs from Dr. Kashino in the aftermath of a battle with a robot called Kaka that completely tore off his right arm. Kashido unfortunately is unable to repair Geno's due to a wicked element. He burnt his hand a little while ago. But on the plus side, Kashido does know of a certain family who has the capabilities to fix them right up and then some. A family world famous for selling their inventions. Of course, it's Bulma and her father, Dr. Briefs. After a repair session at the Capsule Corpse, the two inventors have managed to fully restore Genos using the armor pieces of Android 16. Genos noticed that although this new armor is pretty bulky, it must have surely made him a far more formidable fighter, which leads him to make a move for the door immediately despite Bulma's assistance to rest. He's just too determined to continue his training, but he's very grateful to Dr. Briefs and his daughter for so kindly repairing him. Kashido's initial work on him was pretty good it seems. As the two inventors leased Genos out the building and offer to show him around West City, they caught a sight of a galactic patrolman, none other than Jocko. Bomo's irritated to see him around here and demands to know why he's here. It turns out to warm people. Apparently, Frieza's older brother, Cooler along with his entire elite task force, is on their way to Earth to conquer it, with the immense time of arrival at 30 minutes. To make matters even worse, Goku and Vegeta can't help out as they're on Beerus' planet training hard with Whis with no other way to contact them at all. Of all people, Geno seems to have a plan. After pressing Jocko for Cooler's details like his disaster level, though no Dragon Ball character is even familiar with such thing, Genos tells Jocko to seek out help for his supposedly unbeatable teacher which he happily does. All that's left is for the other heroes of the world to assemble, starting with Krillin, who's pretty eager to fight for Earth once again. Bulma also thinks how to possibly get Whis's attention this time. Above the atmosphere. Cooler's ship prepares to enter the planet's airspace. It's a race between the ship and Genos to the landing site, who suddenly learns that his new armor lets him fly freely. This lets him reach the landing site first, catching the glimpse of Cooler's ship descending. He unleashes a pair of armed cannons to instantly shoot down the ship with practically no effort. Unfortunately, Cooler and his armor squadron survive as they rocket out the ruins with Cooler promising their unknown attacker that he'll pay dearly for this act. It looks to be one versus four situation when the other heroes that Bulma assemble begin to arrive, starting with Gohan and Piccolo. Gohan's excited about the possibility of teaming up with a robot, or, well, a cyborg as Genos corrects him. Then some more fighters arrive, and one of their bald heads makes Genos think that it's finally his teacher, the one, and only, Never mind, it's just Tien. But then another bald figure arrives. Could this be the teacher? No, not really. It's just Master Roshi piggyback riding on a top of Krillin. Piccolo's trying to make everyone focus on the threat at hand, but Cooler doesn't seem to care about the rattle in front of him, only wanting to see this so called Super Saiyan. Finally, Nez goes for the baldies in the crowd. Yoshi tries to prove he still got it with a Kamehameha which only lightly wins Nez. Krillin steps in with a storm of destructive discus that Nez barely managed to navigate with some clever head tricks, so it's still not enough to defeat him. Tien comes in and clutch however with a solar flare to blind Nez, followed by a Kamehameha that only seems to put a scratch on him. Geno seems to be impressed at even the enemy's constitutions. The fight between Gohan and Zazal has the half sane on the defensive, with Zazal criticizing him for fleeting his attacks. There seems to be no way in for Gohan to attack before Piccolo gives him some more support. First, a sharp new sword, and next, a fresh new gi for morale. This gives him the strength to bring the fight to Zazal, 
When Dora reminds Piccolo who he's fighting with a return punch to the face. But Piccolo's curious about how Cooler and his forces are back after seemingly being defeated a long time ago. It turns out according to Dor that King Cole's resurrection chambers are able to bring him back to life form in its entirety. No matter how little tissues is left over on the corpse, the Z fighters never found the bodies after all. But Piccolo finds this hilarious. He can't believe they survived such a pathetic way. Wanting this battle to finish, he wins Dor with a gut punch before teleporting him behind him and blasting him with a beam of energy, eliminating him instantly. No opportunity to collect tissue this time. Meanwhile, Zazao learns of his comrade's death. He goes in for the kill on Gohan, but Gohan gets confident tossing away his sword and mocking the soldier. He demonstrates the Earthling's trait of rapiding ultra power levels that catch Zazao off guard and throws him 100 yards in the sky directly into the floor. He splatters across the ground instantly, pretty dead. Nez is outnumbered. To defend himself, he shocks Krillin and Tien with an electric attack to disable them, then lands a colossal knee attack on Roshi. The three seems to be down for the count, but Genos managed to have saved Roshi with his upgraded abilities at the last second. Everybody's caught off guard with this development, suddenly scrabbling to learn about Genos, all he's willing to say that unless you're his teacher, blunt force won't work. He immediately flies after Nez and dodges his electric attacks using his own detachable rocket arms to counterattack and landing the ultimate finisher with an infernal blast. The armor squadron has just been obliterated from existence and everybody is just in awe. Now that's just left to worry is Cooler, who's flexing some mad push-up skills on a nearby mountain. As they travel up to him, he seems a bit disappointed at the worst that his forces are gone still waiting for the Super Saiyan's arrival. Piccolo remarks on how similar Cooler and Frieza are regarding their allies, but Cooler rejects the idea. He's been training hard, extremely hard ever since the last defeat at the hands of the heroes, allowing himself to rival the power of the gods themselves. There's not much hope for the Z fighters, and meanwhile Bulma's still struggling to contact Whis. Cooler decides he will fight Piccolo and Gon to test out his new body. In the standoff, Gohan decides to flex his own power against Cooler, inadvertently revealing himself to have sane blood. Before they can even think about attacking, Cooler sneaks up from behind and stabs Piccolo through the heart with his bare hand. He throws him to the one side and lets Gohan come for him, able to block every single punch and kick that Gohan tries to use, and gets sent to the ground with a single kick. It's a brutal hit, but before Cooler can come in for the killing blow, Geno's detachable fist socks him right in the face and catches him off guard. Geno swears that he'll destroy Cooler for the sake of the planet, but however does it transpire? Meanwhile, Jocko's search for Geno's teacher has led him. Well, where else? Just outside Saitama's apartment. The Tidan in the question is coming back from the shop when he sees a weird alien standing by his door acting very flamboyant and wants to know his business. Of course, the business in question is regarding Cooler. How was he sent by Genos to get help from Saitama himself? He's intrigued, having defeat the Dark Pirates, already he wonders how strong another killer alien could be, and so he decides to leave, but not before getting a new change of clothes, of course. In another part of town, a certain Dr. Kanshin, accompanied by his bio men, are searching around for a man called King, who they manage to find walking the streets. Kochin wants King to come with him, or else he begin attacking bystanders, which nobody would want. Ultimately, he comes quietly to protect the civilians. Despite insisting, he still has to wash his hands. Dr. Kochin brings King to a domain of Dr. Willow, except he is not expected to see a gigantic mass of brains and wires. Willow wants to see how he, the world's strongest man, will stack up against a legion of warriors that artificially created Ibifuria, Kishimi, and Misoka-san. King is too insistent on his personal hygiene, trying to back out of the situation before he gets hurt. But the warriors charge at him. He thinks this is the end for him. Until Saitama bursts out of nowhere and performs his namesake, punching all the warriors away one by one. 
He apologizes for being late, supposedly having a pit stop before this fight. Everyone is confused by this sudden arrival, but Dr. Willow comes to a new assignment. Saitama's body is actually the one to be the strongest in the world. By transplanting his own mind into this new body, he will be able to conquer the world for himself. Saitama doesn't seem too happy about this, declaring that it won't be so easy for him to give up his body, and in spite of all of Dr. Willow's mad rambles about becoming human again, Saitama just dispatches him easily with only, say it with me now, one punch. Cochin decides to lay off these ridiculously overpowered guys just for one day. Meanwhile, as Saitama and King regroup, all that's on Saitama's mind is the time. It's 7 in the evening, which means he's just missed the special sales at the stores. Better luck next time, Saitama. And that's the end of our video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like this video and press that notification icon to never miss our videos ever. I'm your host, Bro. I'll see you next time. Until then, peace.